Hello, good day, and welcome to the Point 99 podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Steve, and we're rapidly approaching the end of the season as this is episode eight of season five. Kicking things off with the intro for a change. For anyone who might not already know, the Point 99 podcast is a running podcast for all runners of all abilities, but especially the everyday runners out there like you and I. The purpose of the 99 is to try and help you along whatever path your journey is taking. That might be through relatable guests that we feature weekly with their unique and awesome stories, shared experiences and lessons that we will all inevitably learn during our own journeys. At least by sharing them, you might avoid coming across the same issues that we've had. The 99's biggest goal is and will always be to demonstrate that we are more alike than we sometimes think and that through shared conversation, we can improve as runners and hopefully as more rounded individuals in our everyday lives as well. This week, we are taking the standard running chat that we have with the majority of our guests in a slightly different direction as we welcome a runner who has what some of you may consider a more interesting take on the sport and the footwear, or lack thereof, that he uses while he's outdoors. There will, of course, be more about that genuinely nice guy very, very soon. But first, let's dip our toes into my week in running and more importantly, that of the wider community. For myself, it was once again much the same as last week's episode. I did finally get out for a couple of runs, but they weren't anything super long as I might have liked. Instead, it was back to back 10Ks on Saturday and Sunday, just to simply get some movement in. The first of the runs was on Saturday and it was a back to back uh, 5K effort. That was only because when I set off for the first part of my run, I noticed that my splits were pretty consistent, pretty decent pace. And I thought, you know what, let's just pick up the pace a little bit, put some effort into it. So it was my second fastest 5k with a 20 minute and six second effort. Very close to reaching another sub 20 and very close to my PB, but sadly wasn't to be I hadn't planned to get a PB. It was just one of these things that happened. I hadn't been out all week. And when I set off, it just kind of worked out really, really well for me. Although the first couple of kilometers were comfortable by the time I started kicking, it maybe was a little bit too little too late. Um, One of the biggest problems I've always had, like I've mentioned on the podcast before, is that I struggle to push myself and drive to the line. So I think if anything, it's helped me come to the conclusion that I do need to join a club or at least a group that will give me the focus and ability to push these times lower because I know I've got the capability, I've got the capacity, it's just actually doing it. On that thought, I am very lucky to have someone who was and may still be the club secretary for my closest running club working for me during the election proceedings next week. So maybe before this season is out, I may have bitten the bullet and got my backside along to give one of their taster sessions a go and just see what I can do and how I can develop my running a little bit more. In the wider running community, we have a couple of shout outs and some observations from my own feed. The biggest issue I am always going to have though is missing people out because my own feed's only so good. The algorithm only shows me what it wants to show me. So I do miss a lot of people. I did put the question up for inclusion, but as per the last few times, it wasn't well received. I did have a couple, but I do want to shout you out. Don't feel like you can't add yourself. Nobody's going to judge you for shouting yourself out. If anything, it shows more willingness to... Uh, embrace your achievements. So if you ever see the question again, if I do put it up, feel free to let me know. Or you can always slide into my DMs like our first shout did this week. This one comes from Andrew Murdoch, who is shouting at Curly Steph X ahead of her Saltire 12 solo this weekend. These are the sort of things I love when people slide in, they show appreciation to someone else and he's there to wish her all the best and good luck for the Saltire. I'll echo that but I am pretty sure I would have seen that one coming up and would, well, I will revisit it next week on the shout outs. And I'm pretty sure Steph will also be shouting herself out too. 
But thank you for getting involved in that one, Andrew. It is really nice to hear from new faces. You are a new face to the show, even though you did say that you are loving what I'm doing. So thank you very much, sir. And thank you for shouting out, Steph. I'm pretty sure we have a few others within the wider community tackling the salt hire this weekend. Uh, not forgetting Mike Houston, who I know is tackling the 24 uh, previous guest to the show, the Pulfit Ultra Runner now running beyond limits. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll have a clearer picture as the posts come up over the weekend and Medal Monday. Um, but I have had some confusion as to who's doing what, because I know the West Highland Way is coming up in the next week or so, the next couple of weeks. And I know some of the ultra runners are doing that. And there are a few doing the saltire, but I'm getting a little bit of kind of cross wires as to who's doing what. But next week, hopefully we will hit the nail on the head and shout out the right people doing the right things. We do have a fair few of the men's and women's 10k smashers that took place in Glasgow over the weekend. But let's first cover this shout from our competition winner, Ultra Linny, as she shouts herself out for attending Emily in the Outdoors' Sunset Reset on Wednesday night. I assume that she did actually get herself out to that because I never saw on her stories or in her feed if that actually took place or whether she got her back backside along to it. But I know Emily has a lot on the go covering a whole rake of things, different avenues, and as always is a busy lady. Hop on over to Emily's profile to give her a follow and see what she's got going on, whether it's her yoga, whether it's running. She is doing some amazing things for the community. On to the men's and women's 10k. We've got James McQuillan shouting out Andrew Kennedy for his PB at the event. I always love a cheeky PB shout, especially when it comes from James, who is such a massive supporter of others in the community. Well done, Andrew. And well done to you, James, for supporting the podcast and supporting Andrew in his PBs. Stuart runs a lot that he does is shouting out his 44 minute and 44 seconds from the event. It's not that far off his PB either, but given the class photo of him looking like he was going to launch a water bottle at the camera person, I'm not sure if Stuart was actually filling it on the day or not, but that was pretty close, man. Well done. A big effort right there. I personally saw a rapid performance from my Loch Ness 24 year one and year two pal Jamie's underscore runs as he blasted out a 43-32 at the event. Not half bad given that he's on the road to recovery from injury and illness. Jamie will certainly be smashing that PB very, very soon. Big Bob Burrell had himself a good time of it, fitting in the 10k in between his long run session, ticking off a whopping 22 miles uh, with the 10k kind of sandwiched in the middle and still slapping it. A really respectable 49-48. Well done, Bob. That's some effort given the distance you were bagging that day. Otherwise, we have the Glasgow runner Connor Allen, Jim Boyle, Kevin Craig, Thomas Stewart and Ryan, that old bald guy Miller, down in attendance as well. Looking like they were having a ball in what actually looked like a really good set of conditions for a change, especially given how variable the weather has been in Scotland recently. From the ladies, I only caught cracking performances from Alison Jardin, Scottish Marathon Girl and sidekick to Ryan Miller on the Press Play and Run podcast, casually smashing out a 43-42 and bagging herself 15th female and third in her age category. And Cat runner mum, Catriona Nesbitt, who from her post race review did say that she found the race pretty tough, carrying a few niggles. Still got it done though, Kat, which is more than can be said for many others. So a big well done, regardless of if it went to plan or not. Away from Glasgow, we had our wee Parisian powerhouse pal, LED Runs Curls and Chocolate Buns, cracking out the Trail Outlaws half, which she said was beautiful but brutal, while the positive pacer, Natalie Hunter, Ellie Forrester, LEX 26.2, Nick McGowan Lowe and Positive Lassie Cadden were all down at Loch Lomond 10k and which also looked like spot on conditions. 
So well done to everyone I mentioned. And if I didn't mention you next time, get yourself into the question box or the DMs, but also a huge congratulations to whatever you were smashing last weekend or over the course of this week. Right, on to this week's guest. And once again, I'm going to let Steve from the other night do the talking as we welcome a good friend of mine from the running community to the show. He's a man who has a love for the more freeing side of running, kicking off his shoes and feeling the grass between his toes. Can only be one man. It's Ben, the barefoot daddy, Ben Weeks. Next up in the hot seat, we have a man who is all about feet. And no, not in the way your filthy minds are thinking, or at least not that I know of anyway. I mean, he's all about the barefoot way of life, or more specifically, barefoot running. His dedication to barefoot running and anything barefoot adjacent is blindingly obvious to anyone who follows his Instagram, with daily takes on the physical and mental benefits he has experienced. His love for Barefoot extends beyond social media, as he is not only the co-founder of the Barefoot Crew 5K, an international love fest for barefoot running, but also a barefoot record holder, barefoot marathon finisher and all-round font of barefoot knowledge. This is sure to be an informative one, as we welcome a man I've had the privilege of meeting and teaming up with at last year's Loch Ness 24. He's incredibly well-spoken and a genuinely nice guy to be in the company of. So let's introduce him to the rest of the 99 as we welcome the barefoot daddy himself to the show, Ben Weeks. (laughs) Welcome, Ben. Wow, that's quite some intro. Thanks, Stephen. Written in five minutes after I panicked and forgot that I hadn't written one. Oh, wow. (laughs) Are you having a good day? Yeah, not bad. It's been busy. I've been, uh, I've had sort of two or three zoom call zoom or video calls today uh that i'm in the flow of conversation or i'm at the tail end of it and this is going to be really crap you were away in london as well were you yesterday uh no i mean so my i i I am a commercial property agent by trade i I go into london i was in london last uh week uh, and then I was in Woking and I yeah, dance around. I'm in Bishop Storford ne- next week. It's all really subjective to what the client, where the client wants me to be and all that sort of stuff. It's, yeah. an, it's an odd one as a Strava follower of yours. Oh, we're going to get it to actual structured questions, but I do find it strange if you're a lot of the time you're in London, I never see you running there. I, I'm in and out. Like as right, in, on the train in, in, in and out again. In and out, but I don't overnight. So I, I, we live an hour's train ride. Right. So I train ride in, go and do the work, train ride out. But I use it as my rest day, typically. So, you know, and I, it usually ends maybe having a couple of beers with clients and colleagues after the fact <laughs> as well. And frankly, who wants to run on that unless you're missing the train or you're late for the train? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I don't, I don't live that. I don't live far enough, enough away to just. I have overnighted a couple of times because because of animals and my kid and my wife has a day job as well. It sort of impressed upon me that an overnight thing, if it were on a regular occurrence, has an impact on family life. Yeah, knock on effect. So I, I've learned to sort of manage. And actually, the older I get. I actually quite like coming home. It's <laughs> nice going into the big city. I like I like London for what it is. Once I'm on the eight oh three train and see the sort of the green countryside sort of catching up with me, your heart sort of you, you have a little bit more peace. <clears throat> comfort the comfort of nature. Oh man. And and, and- It'll be beneficial as well. I don't think you could really do much barefoot running unless it was with the uh, barefoot shoes on as well in London itself. I, I that have, would be a terrible place to be. I, I have barefooted in London. So okay. I have overni- I have overnighted and out of principle, I think, uh, I, I was I think I, I was staying in Paddington, which is essentially my local station, I guess the local closest station to us. Uh, and I'd overnighted and got up at the crack of the crack of dawn and and whilst it wasn't quite so busy and Paddington if you've been into London isn't terribly far from Hyde Park and so I I, the the pavements themselves were quite smooth 
Okay. You, you are, but you're you're ever like as as I'm sure we'll get on to as a as a barefoot runner, you are you're hyper vigilant when you wear shoes. So imagine when you're barefooted, the 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 vigilance sort of goes up tenfold for mm. anything that might be of damage to your feet or filth to your feet. <laughs> and that's there have been uh, some really good photos of your feet up and uh, how dirty they get but before we get to any of that um i think the best place to start and i know you've covered it on previous podcasts before um check me doing some actual research as well uh can you take us back to where your love of running came from and and then maybe um extend that broaden that to how you really got into barefoot running to begin with sure so uh i think i've always do you know, weirdly, I think it, there was there was some thing that we did on the Barefoot Crew about what's your background of running, or there was there was some uh, bit. And when I was at school down in Sussex, there's there's a photograph of me. I must have been bordering on thirteen, uh, where I'm in uh, you know the starting position, not in starting blocks, but in a starting position barefoot to do. Uh, it was either I. It was either 200 or 400 metres. I was quite enjoyed 400 metres actually at school, to be fair. So, um, and I was barefoot then, but I, it was it was not a it was not a recollection I had. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of so, so, I've always run and had sort of elements of fitness. I've gone I quite like I've always liked strength training, and I think I'd done I'd moved to uh, the US when I was what 25, 20, 20, 22. Somewhere around there, 21, 22, no. (laughs) Post-university, it was about 25. I went and joined a cruise ship and then ended up meeting a girl that became my first wife. Uh, And we ultimately worked our way through to Canada, which is where I settled for about sort of eight to 10 years, I think. Uh, And I got into rugby and then realised that life and my age at the time, which was probably just cusping over into my early 30s, maybe rugby wasn't the sport that was working. And I circled back around in order to keep physically fit and active to running. Um, So it it seems to be sort of, I think the interest has been sort of latter years, I suppose, rather than, but it's always some element of fitness has always been of interest. You you mentioned on... um the other podcast I've just mentioned there, I can't remember the name of it, but you did mention that quite a significant influence on, on fitness generally, because you are a physically fit guy. You do a lot of, of weight stuff, um, a, a lot of daily takes on, on what you're doing just to keep a good core strength and physical strength generally. Um, you did mention a little bit of weight loss as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I, um, I, I so I listened to Smartless. Are you familiar with Smartless with um, no, Jason Bateman? Not one the, I'm familiar with. So Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and um, uh, uh, Jack from uh, God, his name's going to lose me. The three actors. They have a podcast called Smartless, and they interview um, a variety of celebrities. The reason I bring this up, and it really has only occurred to me recently, is that. Jason Bateman is particularly, as an actor, he's sort of a Team Wolf 2, he's done a whole bunch of game night, those, those sorts of films. Yeah. I'm not familiar with who he is. He's, I find his dry sense of humour particularly funny, which is what was the draw to listening to it. But he refers to himself uh, and why he is quite conscientious of what he eats, because inside of him there is a 400-pound man waiting to come out. Yes. I, I, if I, if I, if I rest and relax and put my feet up, I, my uh, inclination is towards making poor choices from a dietary perspective. Uh, and so I, I've just had a couple of moments where I've, I've gotten to, I think, 17 stone, okay. uh, which uh, some, some have said, oh, it doesn't, you didn't, it, it doesn't, you hold it well enough, but right? you, you know, you're, you're, you're aware of <clears throat> your yeah. size. Uh, and so, yes, I've sort of fallen into. I'm glad. I'm glad to say, the last three years, I've been able to plateau, and I've sort of found what works for me. 
Uh, that could again be like a lot of things seeming to be illustrative of my life at the moment. It's sort of the acceptance of age and what is what, what works and what doesn't. And so I'm quite systematic in what I eat. Uh, and, and having a routine as well, uh, it, I, I find helps a lot. I, I did put up a post fairly recently about, I was similar to yourself. If I sit at a weekend, I am quite prone to getting a family sharing bag of crisps or two and eating them myself. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I think nothing of that. Yeah. And then still feeling hungry. And it's so easy to do. It's it's how you maintain that lifestyle, though, of, well, I, I can do that, but I need to try and fight that fight somehow. I have. It's really interesting. So I've been working with a, a trainer off and on uh, called um, Chris Pratt. He's got a, a feed called Muevo Chris. I tag him on a bunch of stuff. And we were sort of talking, I want to, I personally want to get down. So I, I, whilst I plateaued, my weight has sort of just sort of bimbled along because I haven't been sort of conscientious of it. And I'm, mm-hmm. there's a part of me that still wants to get down to just about sort of 13 and a half stone, which is about 190 pounds for anyone yeah. who listens abroad. Um, and uh, that, that, that would be my fighting weight. You would, some might argue, I think I got down to about 186 when I finished the world record. Um, uh, just because of the nature of what it was doing and the sort of the consistency of running a half yeah. marathon every day. Um, I, what, uh, everything sort of started not falling off. It wasn't sort of like watching alone, if anyone was alone, where they sort of starve, not starve themselves, but they're surviving for as long as they can. It wasn't that bad, but it was, there's a quite, there's quite a threshold. And I, I, would, I want to be at sort of just on that sweet spot. And that's what I'm hunting for. But I, I whilst I'm going, it's going down, I, I'm building muscle as well. So it sort of becomes this sort of six of one, half a dozen of the other. So I'm going down, but then the muscle's going up and then you, it's all this Yeah, thing. I was going to say, because you do post a bit about your your, your uh, weight training side of, of your yeah, lifestyle yeah. as well. And it's really inspirational. Uh, even before the 24, I remember people like Giz and, and, and others making comment about you were doing like pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, and you were doing like mm. planks and, and all sorts of different things. Of, and the comments of, it would be great if we could do that. But it's not that anyone can, it's just they don't have the mindset to do it. And you seem to to have that focus to to get out and do that in, in whatever space you're doing it. Yeah, I, I think... The, the nature of my job, and I'm fundamentally self-employed, allows me to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I can devote some time to to that. So it, it's become quite a part of my routine. Like, I, I, it doesn't dictate, but it, it, it's, I, 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 I enjoy doing it. I enjoy the sensation of going out for a run with that. And that, that's interesting me. It sort of, it, it ad libs a little bit into sort of where I find myself today in that I, I quite like just going out for a run. And when you get back, I don't have any airs to, to achieve anything. Not that I wouldn't want to achieve, but I, I just, I don't, I enjoy the process of going out for a run and whether that's an hour or whether that's half an hour or what have So today for a variety of reasons, I only ran for half an hour, but I got home feeling you know, sweaty, like I've sort of worked my body a bit and that's all good. And then to do the strength training as well, it's sort of, it's very much sort of knowing what your levels of endurance are. Yeah. And I'm freaking convinced as well, by the way, that I left so much on the table. I think Loch Ness uh, last year. I, there's a, I'm, <laughs> honestly, when I do come back, because I will, because yeah. it, it feels like something I've left behind. I, this year, I think, is going to be, as much as I want to, I think it's just going to be problematic. Mm-hmm. When I do come, I, 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 I want to do a solo and just see how far I can go until I drop. Um, we'll, we'll cycle back around to that, because I think yeah, there's, sure. there's, there are reasons as well. Um, and you kind of touched on it when we were talking about running in London and being hyper aware of, of foot care. Um, and I think that's maybe one of the reasons um, there would have been an issue just beforehand. But it's kind of going back around to your your love of running. You've always been fit from a young age. You've always had an interest in rugby and then running, um, taking over that to have a, a more of a maintaining a lifestyle. Um, where did then barefoot running specifically kind of take off for you as a main interest? Lockdown. A lo- lockdown's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> uh so I, 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 
barefoot running in in the term where it is minimalist trainers yeah your vibram five fingers and and the, the various other brands that are out there um i i found those in canada so i'd done i'd 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 done god what was it um I'd started doing half my uh, 10Ks with my my sister-in-law and I'd, I'd done, it was called the Angus Glen Half Marathon and I'd, I'd gone, I'd gotten into running at that point. This is sort of in, just outside of Toronto. Uh, and I'd, I'd done a few of those and uh, as you can hear on other podcasts, I happened to be looking for a change in trainer because I'd hit the sort of mileage and there, I was in the market and I my eye glanced upon... Um, New Balance, I think they were called Nimbus 10, which was their entry into the barefoot marketplace. This was two mid 2000, somewhere 2005, six, okay. seven, eight, somewhere around yeah. there. So not it was quite a while back. Although, having said that, barefoot itself is just sort of that's yeah, it's there, still it's uh, still really finding its feet. It's I mean, part it's, of the pun. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not start. I, I didn't start anything or join the trend before. I think it was sort of probably on the periphery. Anyhow, I tried these shoes, and it was it was quite an easy and natural transition into them. I mean, uh, you were guided by the shop assistant in that don't you know don't run before you walk uh, in the shoes and sort of gain confidence in sort of not having any cushioning. But it just, it seemingly came to me quite naturally, as I recall, uh, and in, in the scheme of things, it wasn't that long ago. Um, and I, I haven't really put them down since. I was a bit resistant to um, the Vibram Five Fingers because it, it seemed a bit silly. <laughs> Why do you, And but but I've since educated myself, obviously, over, okay. over time. Uh, and I've had a, a dozen different pairs of the Vibram Five Fingered range, which have been super. Um, but it's yeah, that that's where it started. As for actually kicking off the shoes in their entirety, mm -hmm. um, and it ad libs into the creation of the Barefoot Crew. I, I'm always remiss to sort of take the mantle for that, but apparently I, I, it started with something that I did. So um, I I had seen. Because of the the Instagram tag and the nature of what my feed was, whether the algorithm started well, it, <clears throat> my understanding is the algorithm started feeding me a whole bunch of content of people that were either running in sandals or were actually barefoot. Um, and there was this chap down in uh, um, Taunton that uh, I'd started interacting with and chatting with and uh, we've met a couple of times and sort of had conversations with. He was he was posting and still does to this day, uh, walks around barefooted and he was working in a shoe shop but was barefooted. And I, I started seeing more of that sort of content, didn't really yeah. matter where it was uh, and how insignificant it was. It was, I, it, my feed was there. I, I sort of resisted to the sandal the wild soul guys if they ever listen to this will probably be sort of, oh, what the hell <laughs> i've spoken to tom at length uh, on a on a zoom chat and and he knows where where sort of my background is but i i i don't know it was it was like well i just don't see that either you wear shoes or you don't it was kind of the the attitude that i had yeah where it sort of materials and i i, I think it just hit critical mass i was I quite enjoying the running at the time uh, and decided, and I was chatting to some people about it, and, and it was like, all right, fine, I will do this video, I will do this thing on this one day of the week and see how many people, and it's it, it snowballed uh, a lot quicker. Than, not, I, I'm, I'm, there was absolutely no virality to it in terms of sort of, it, it became an internet sensation. It, it, it didn't, but... Those in, Got a in good following. Opinion, Six, yeah, Vic, Vic, Vic Owens, who is um, equally as reluctant to sort of take the limelight. Uh, she she knows social media backwards, back, backwards and sideways. Uh, and I've, I've gotten quite busy at work and sort of reached out to her and asked her to sort of pick up some of the mantle. And she's done so and turned it into this six and a half. I mean, we'll be hitting 10K, 10,000 followers before she's sort of done with it. Oh, oh easy, easy, easy. Um, 
I do like that account as well because it's it's varied. There's a nice variety of information on it. It, it, it spotlights different people. Um, you feature on it, but it's not just all about you guys. It's about the, the crew as a whole and the, the different walks of life that they come from, the different areas of the world that they come from. Um, but from a, from a barefoot, kind of, kind of kicking off the shoes perspective, do you feel then that when you're out running, uh, from 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 my perspective, there's something quite homely and, and and nice when you get in from a hard day, just kicking the shoes off and being barefoot around the house. Is that what it feels like? Uh, it 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 does. And again, we'll probably circle back around to it. But but there were there were a couple of moments on Loch Ness where sort of coming around that final point in the spanking rain when when you were sort of home stretch where all the tents were in our <laughs> own tent city actually taking the shoot going through the woods was i for me the simple answer to your question is yes it's very much like that it, it you there, there's 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 some trepidation initially what am i going to get up to but it's it's quite exciting it's almost like you get a little ad- adrenaline right even if to sort of you kick off the shoes on a winter's morning you know it's cold you can see frost on the ground and you walk out and put your feet on the ground like your bare feet on the ground there's that sort of that, there's that sort of tingle and you can you can describe it as whatever you want those who are slightly more uh into the bigger picture than i am might sort of say well that's your neurons and uh, pulsars and all that sort of thing you're glit sucking up from the the earth's core mm-hmm. um i i can't answer that i i, I understand the science behind it but uh, it's okay. just one of those it's a freeing experience there's, there's, it's, it's more well, comfort than anything else i i think so yeah i mean it, it, uh, there's also that sort of fun part of when you bump into people and, and they oh, god your birth work which which amuses me generally because it sort of spurs a conversation in most cases i mean I've, yeah. I've, some people have had abuse before <laughs> uh, which which is quite shocking i mean curiosity can <laughs> It turns up in various faces, I suppose. It's most in, in in the terms of abuse, but I, I, any interaction I've had, people have been curious and what's it like, and your feet must be like leather, yeah, and all that sort of thing. But I, that doesn't really I, the leather leatheriness occurs if you're doing something consistently. But it, your feet are adaptable, like yeah. every part of your being, right? You you will adapt to circumstances, physically or mentally, and your yeah. feet are no different, right? Exactly. Tell, uh, tell me then, how did you uh, adapt to to the challenge of um, the world record and, and even just running the marathon? How did your feet fare from that? Because that's a fair old distance uh, for just the marathon al- alone in the kind of barefoot mm-hmm. perspective. And I'm, I'm assuming it was barefoot shoes. It wasn't completely barefoot. But yes. No, no. My first ever marathon was completely barefoot. It was completely barefoot. Not, so how not, did how did that was that on tar was that was that a trail yeah, yeah. So it's around um for the 2012 olympics the dawny lake uh rowing center so the, there's there is a, is it a four mile oh, whatever it was i can't remember what the, how the loop length is but you had to do sort of four and a half loops around this this um lake and yeah we were um we were completely barefoot so the the four founders of the barefoot crew took it you know, one of the guys was going to do it anyway. Uh, sadly, he got injured, injured, and had to step out of the, the half marathon point. But with the three, the other, the other three of us decided to uh, um, join him and come and run it. And and, and that, yeah, that was the first marathon that I did. It was quite slow though, five and a half. An hour. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not slow. It's still pretty quick, uh, especially if you're barefoot. You don't have slipper shoes on. It was all um, it, like it was. There, there was grass there and tarmac, so if things got a little out of hand, I, I, it was, it was quite. And, and again, this this falls into the. It's not that I've left anything on the table. I'd be quite keen to go back and do it, and see if I could do it faster. Yeah, now you've got the knowledge and the experience. Yeah, and the the takeaway was that that I ended up. Um, I I sort of placed my feet in a way that I ended up having quite a big blister on, on the side of my foot, but it didn't really sort of manifest beyond popping it and off to the race. It was, it was fine. You'd sort of compete it and you're fine. 
other than the blister, you, you, your feet were, were were pretty good. They were they adapted to the the terrain yeah. and to yeah. to your pace. Yeah, uh, I yeah I uh, no, I've had no particular complaints. I have um, not not so much at the moment because my barefooting adventures uh, have been uh, uh, overshadowed by trying to get back on in play with running generally. But there's I have cracks up the back of my heel that. Uh, uh, my mother, and to a certain degree, my, my wife is quite accepting of the madness of it. My mother, every time she sees my feet, is like, "My God, that must be horrendous for you." <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you don't, you don't really notice. So I think it, it, there's, there's just a sort of a firmness to the to the foot. But I, yeah. I get our barefooters' feet are as sensitive as anyone else's, just maybe slightly more conditioned. Yeah, uh, to the various terrain changes that you can encounter. Terrain, ch- terrain changes uh, kind of leads me back to then to 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 London, um, but then also to coming up to the twenty four. Um, you had not long before the twenty four been out running, and you'd cut your foot, and you'd been out on, I think it was grass. You'd been out on a on a, on a, on a field, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah, yeah. You quite badly cut your foot, and yeah. that was that was only a couple of weeks or a week before the twenty four. Yeah. So you, you come up with an injury. And I think you did yourself an injustice and you, you kind of touched on it there. You feel like you've left a little bit on the table, but you did have an injury slightly different to what the rest of us might have had, like calf injuries or knee, mm. to have a, a cut on the bottom of your foot where it's constantly moving and flexing and it doesn't really get a chance to heal as well as anywhere mm. else on the body. I, th- I feel like you might have been unfair on yourself you still managed to do a, an incredible distance. You were very hard on yourself every lap that you did, yeah. um, given the, the the terrain and the, the weather as well. And you did try your best in shoes, and you eventually said, "No, stuff it. I'm I'm going out." And I think you'd had your slides on or something. And you took yeah. them off. You tried to do some distance, and you, you were uh, happy when you came back. It was a it was the first uh, pair of Wild Soul uh, sandals that I'd, that that I'd been sort of practicing with. And actually, they were they're they're great. I mean, I I I, I, I was a resistant convert to, to the whole sandal con. I, I would not wear them with socks if I'm brutally honest. <laughs> what sort of me, Englishman were you? Who the fuck wears socks with a sandal? <laughs> and I, I ain't no Jesus follower, man. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, I I retract that last statement, but I. Yeah, I, I I tried it in in those, but there were moments where I, I felt sort of comfortable with the train that, that I was able to sort of kick them off, and and actually, I you just open up more, I, you just feel sort of more in touch with the with where where you're running. In terms of sort of injury, like you I sort of deviated my own my my own way past the sort of world record thing. I mean, it, the world record thing was I within the first three days of doing that I, I got um a cut on my left like to my left toe at the sort of one of the creases that i assumed would just sort of sort itself out and and uh, by i think it was day 23 or 24 uh i there was some concern that it was potentially going to go seps, seps yeah septic yeah just because it didn't, it didn't it's not in a place that breeds it it's well, I mean, all the time. I mean, it was exposed to the train. So the course that I'd chosen was mm-hmm. um, it's it's called the uh, North Wessex area of natural beauty. It's beautiful. I mean, it's not it's not Highlands beautiful, but it has its own majesty to it. And uh, I mean, it made going and doing it every day an absolute joy. Um, but on the set, if you were to do drone imagery of it, you'd be like, oh my God, that's like smooth as a baby's bottom and it's fine. But a lot of the fields are arable farms or arable fields. And so they're either, there are, there are, there's hooved animals in there. And so the grasses generally can be quite resilient. So you obviously have some soft grass and you have some slightly more, um, I'll, I'll term it as pampas grass, but they sort of stick up and this injury every so often would get stuck with like sort of fairly the stubble <laughs> yeah stubble thank you that's a good term uh <laughs> used to work on a farm so. <laughs> oh, well, <there> <laughs> um, so it, every so often you'd sort of find you'd find your groove and then and then you'd land on just this random bit of grass that would sort of just send ripples of 
electricity through your being. So it, it, it was fine, but I guess you sort of work out a solution to get through that and you just persevere and, hey, it was only two and a half hours, right, at the max. <laughs> what was the record then? So uh, the, the record was uh, 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 the most consecutive um, barefoot half marathons. And uh, the, the men's version was set at 20 days. And how many days did you manage? 31. Wow. But this is Vic's fault. I mean, I, was, I, was, I would have been quite happy to stop at 25. And she's like, no, 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 if we're doing this, we're going to 31. And actually, uh, doing, doing 31 um, uh, kind of cock blocks it for anyone else because it, it's a consecutive month. It's a yeah. it has to be within a month. Yeah. And the fact that we've gone to the, the only way you would do it, beat it, would be by doing it 30 days but at a quicker pace. Or I, I don't know how you would, I don't know how you would sort of beat. To, if, if, you, if you set the marker at 20, then there's still 10, 10 or 11 days in which you can still catch up. The fact that we did it at 30, anyhow. It probably would have to come down to, as you say, time. If you were a much, much faster runner in the barefoot world and you were you were doing it in some silly time, let's say an hour 30, like you mentioned to me off, off, off the recording, maybe then, but that's quite a, it's quite a record to have if no one can beat it. Yeah, not that no, no one can beat. They can it's beat. hard to beat, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I... I <laughs> It was quite fun, though. I, I, it was, it was quite nice to do something to to achieve. Like it, I wouldn't have even thought about it if I'm brutally mm. honest. Uh, until and uh, Vic's got a lot to, to uh, answer for, really, because she was look, she was looking to do the female version, and and I'd sort of mentioned after the marathon, I'd sort of had felt that the blood was in the water, and that uh, you know my eyes had dilated, and okay, let's see where we can take this barefoot thing. Um, and she, so, so she, what was the female record then before as well hmm? there wasn't one there wasn't one so whatever she did was going to be was going to be the benchmark and to set the benchmark at something that's incredibly hard to beat <laughs> <laughs> but then she's a she's a bloody force of nature that woman I mean Christ I she is her, her drive is just beyond me in terms of what she accomplishes. I mean, I, I think I'm moving to a phase of, of life where, and, and don't, don't misconstrue this, I don't give a shit kind of mentality. And it's not that I don't give a, I, I'm always uh, in awe of anyone who achieves and uh, pushes themselves beyond uh, what they would typically think is possible. Um, she, she just seems to do it as, as part of a job. Like, that's what it feels like, like, not because, but her passion is driven. It's quite a thing to behold. And, and the fact that, and she always finds, she always finds, uh, she can come up against walls. And for the most part, she seems to find that extra thing that, that drives her forward. I think she's had a bit of coaching of late. Cause she's had a cup. She had a couple of failures last year, okay. but she's quite, a, yeah. And so it's so her, her freaking idea. <laughs> so, so where where your partners in crime it may be driven by the the whole grandness of achievement uh, and pushing boundaries, like you say, yeah, it's so. not that you don't give a shit. It, it's it's more you you do things because you want to do them. I want to and try. Be happy about it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 very much. I mean, I, I, I it, yeah, I, I think it was. Can I do it? And that that was sort of. And I think there's a lot of people. Uh, uh, that that might sort of uh, uh, buy into that. I think there's a. I, I think some people. Can I do this thing? You've got to ask yourself the question. Mm -hmm. And if you can, so be it. Yeah. But at least you try. Yeah. Well, you don't know unless you try. And that maybe actually segues quite nicely into a, a question I've got about if anyone's listening that maybe wants to give barefoot running a go. Mm what would you say is the best starting point? Is it just a case of give it a try, kick your shoes off and go for it? Or would you more recommend a softly, softly try the, the, sh the barefoot shoe and then? I mean, so 
I think that there is a there's a guy called uh, the best athlete Sean uh, Haber based down in Israel. He did a sheet. Um, he did a sheet of sort of what that transitionary process is like, uh, or what what would be an appropriate way to sort of transition from your regular dare I say it, bog standard, sho- bog standard shoes into sort of slightly more of a barefoot preference. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, so that, that's a good resource and you can find it through the barefoot crew and all that. So it's not a plug or anything. If, if people will want to find out, there was a community there that was sort of essentially created for the, for these sorts of questions. Yeah. Um, my personal view, I I had run in barefoot shoes for a quite a time. So you consider the 2008 approximately when I got my first barefoot shoes to eventually coming here uh, or returning home in 2013. So what's that? That's five, three, yeah, five years. I didn't kick the shoes off until lockdown. What's that? That's 2022? 2019, 2020. Yeah, 2019. So it's that's quite a, a change. But then it, I don't think it was really hitting my, yeah, it wasn't wasn't hitting my core points of interest mm-hmm. at that time. So I think you can take you can take time. What I don't know who said know thyself, right? This is this is the 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 core to it, and I think I've said it on other things before. You know yourself. Don't just because I'm going to tell you how to do it. Don't, if you have an interest in taking off your shoes, take them off. Yeah. Don't stand in the garden. And then, if you're comfortable standing on grass or in the garden or on your patio or on your deck or whatever it is, but maybe and you're still curious and you're like, well, what would it feel like to do this? Then do that. But in terms of running, I wouldn't. I wouldn't going going barefoot. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go off and do a a five five or ten k right out the gate take your time walk and run i mean i'm a a classic run walker right i will run i will go for a distance and then i sort of tend to temper down and sort of catch my breath and sort of get a sense of where i am at or check my watch catch and then you carry on going that that worked worked for me and i'd imagine worked for any sort of barefooter but it's all about taking your time there's no set rule there is a book there's i've read i've read a few books uh so there's a there's a guy called ken bob saxton <clears throat> he's largely referred to as the godfather of barefoot uh running uh he has a book uh called it's gonna it's gonna slip my mind now <laughs> you kind of want to call it the barefoot bible but he essentially even has diagrams of how you know, the method by which you should run if you want to become a barefoot runner uh, I don't. He, he wasn't a massively prolific author, I think. So you could, search, if anyone was interested enough, you can search Ken Bob Saxton, uh, and it's and it's in there. He's referenced in Born to Run, which is largely considered the sort of go-to book. And actually, Born for, Born to Run Two, uh, this is by um, Chris McDougall, and uh, who wrote the original, and uh, uh, it was Chris McDougall and. His trainer that wrote the sequel, and actually, uh, I have the I have a copy of it. So, Born to Run Two, and it is actually a sort of a step by step guide and how you sort of go about sort of barefoot running and lifestyle choices and you know all that sort of thing. It's very much on the PC uh, uh, way it, life is moving, as society is moving to, and all that sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. there are there are a ton of resources, and more now than I think there have ever been, especially with the prolific. Uh, rise in sort of Vivo Barefoot and, uh, you know, um, uh, Zero Shoes and uh, Field Grounds. And I like, it seems every five minutes you turn around and there's a different barefoot shoe coming out because people have sort of cotton on to it. There's a, there's a whole bunch of, you could look at Rita, I'm going to cock up a name now, uh, a guy called Andy Bryant in Australia who is a barefoot um, podi- uh, podiatrist. Uh, and y- there's also the Healthy Feet Alliance. So in answer to the question, it's a very long way of sort of saying, <laughs> if you want to get out there and try it, there is a shit ton of stuff that you can fall, uh, like rabbit holes you can fall down. Um, really, so- really just do, do a little bit of, of personal research to, is it 
is it good for you? Uh, it is good for you. I mean, but good is it good for this specific person? Uh, and and in a way, it is maybe softly, softly take your shoes off in the park, go for a. a and I, I even as kids, you you I think most people will remember taking the shoes off and running around in the grass and and the feeling of how responsive it could be. But at the time, you don't think of that side of it. You're just thinking it's a bit of fun running around with the, your shoes on. Yeah. Um, you mentioned there as well as it's maybe something that I didn't really give any consideration of as much as there are nuances into the style and, and, and the best for, uh, form of running of midsole rolling and, impl- and giving yourself propulsion. There's certainly going to be even more nuances to barefoot running to give yourself the longevity of not ruining your feet, not stubbing your toes, not, not ruining your, your, your main uh, items that get you yeah, from yeah, A yeah. to B. Yeah. The, the Ken Ken Bob uh, Saxton, who who gets into a little bit more, as I said, uh, technicality, uh, is that you're you're lightly kissing the ground as you're running. So your your foot, you're, obviously, you're touching the ground, but it, it's your it is a big. You know, this is the debate, right? It's the the forefoot strike, mm-hmm. and and the the heel barely sort of lifts off, and and that sort of the process, but. There's enough stuff out there that talks about sort of falling forward and that's what sort of so running on the spot and then sort of falling forward. But it, it's like that as a, as a process. I yeah, that I'm I'm not a running coach. Uh, I've read what I've read and try to sort of mimic it as best as I can. But yeah, yeah. you're you don't pronate or what is it, pronate or what's the other? Uh, yeah. I have no clue, Ben. I just I do what works for me. <laughs> don't know the words for it <laughs> yeah, they get the the theory is is that barefooting leads to a situation where gait analysis becomes unnecessary because your foot is naturally designed to roll okay. like you've, got, you've got 25 i think 25 to 30 percent of your entire muscle and bone buildup is in your feet yeah it's a significant number in con- considering the size of that the people grow out to and and so your foot is designed to move and undulate as as much as your your hands do when you're sort of gesticulating in a conversation such as we're doing now, uh, and and to sort of encase them into a. I mean, you can get into the neurons and the how much my body is taking in the you know the the um, I'm not a physicist, but you know the how the world's the molecular. Uh, uh, interest that you'll you know all that sort of stuff you get into that but but naturally speaking your feet are designed to be able to adjust and move and and that's where the i i it's really sad Stephen. i i i i i've not looked at shoes since i fell down this rabbit hole in the same way i like you walk around london and you see people with these massive bubble t- i'm like what the fuck yeah. why would you do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And I, I, it doesn't matter which can before that it's just what my opinion is i'm not going to judge anyone I, well, I, i'm by definition i'm judging but it, it, it's, <laughs> it's just it's just how we just because we could create it doesn't mean we should doesn't doesn't mean that we should have done yeah and i I, can't, I think i know what you mean because i'm very fond of uh, a good leather work shoe uh with a thin sole so you do feel you feel the the, the 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 terrain under you. You can feel a, a, a sharp stone. Mm. Um, I'm a bit of a poser. I do like a nice pair of leather shoes, but the, the, almost like the thinner the thinner the sole, the better. But it seems to be very polar opposite to the way I like my running shoes now. It's <laughs> it's the uh, carbon plated. Do you know the funny thing? You can hear that obviously there are a lot of people when we did the marathon around Dorney Lake, it's quite flat and boring track. And you could hit, you could hear the vapor fly because it, it's like that. It's yeah, it is, yeah. All, the, all the stuff. And there we are sort of, I mean, we could have crept up on people. Had, had <laughs> the, the, the feet and there not being any sort of foliage for us to hide upon. Um, and that's something I've been told off in the past when you've got a thin sole on and, and you've got a more kind of, barefoot st- almost style of shoe even though they're leather work shoes you, you, you can go silently and people just just from the gentleness of it and then like you say i was out running with the um vapors on the other night 
there was a little bit of moisture and it was the slap but the suction as well it just sounded like a very odd thing if anyone was ahead of me they would think what the hell's coming behind me um right so then looking at, at maybe what's coming next you 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 feel like you've maybe got um some goals to tackle with something like the 24 again uh, whether that is the Loch Ness one or whether that's any of the number of other 24s I, I, that are I, available. I, I am hands down coming back to Loch Ness. Uh, I, it, 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 it just, and I, I was fully committed to wanting to do it this year, but there's just been elements that uh, are out of my control that sort of leads me to the, the opposite. So my yeah. hope and expectation is, is that much of the crowd will be returning next year. Yeah. Yeah. Th- this year's a bit of an odd one where there's weddings on, there's, other event, other things on that are kind of stopping people from coming back. Whereas next year, maybe with enough planning, we can make more of a more of a big team thing of it again. And fingers crossed, and and praying that it isn't. I, I would winning. come. I, I would come. Had had uh, Giz not come in and saved the day by providing me with a tent, I could have been in all manner of trouble. And so that I, I I would come a hell of a lot more prepared. You did come the, by far the longest I, distance out of everyone. Yeah, yeah. And the, the distance is neither here nor there. I just, I, I, I'm not entirely certain what the hell I was thinking in terms of uh, planning for accommodations and weather. I, I don't, I don't think. It, I just naturally assumed the weather would have been glorious because that's what it had said three it, weeks prior, and it had been the year previous as well. It, yeah. it was, it was sun splitting the ground, worthy yeah. of heat. Um, but in, in answer to what's next, I so uh, for anyone who, who has uh, graciously followed my Instagram um, feed, I um, the, the beginning of the year I was getting an awful lot of heel issues, and it was just just pissing me off. <laughs> you know, I couldn't I couldn't go out for a a run without sort of waking up the following morning and, and my legs sort of screaming at me. And you could put it down to the environmental, you know, the weather and meteorological problems and, you know, the weather's been a bit shit and it's always raining and it's always cold, whatever. I just, I, I just think that, I don't know, I don't know what it is. And I, it was, it was around that time that I then engaged this guy, um, uh, Chris Prattley, um, um, whoever Chris is called, he's, he's very much a sort of a strength and conditioning uh, coach. Uh, and I think some of the stuff we're doing has started paying off dividends that, that I would say literally six months of post Loch Ness, six months have just felt a bit crap for running and just not being engaged in it. That seems to have taken a turn, but it, it's been more a whole, more of, it's been more of a, I'm going to go out with my dog and go for a run and enjoy that time and not think about, I, I was getting caught up. I was going to attempt, and never say never, I was going to attempt another world record in the, the, the last May holiday that was gone of attempting to run 140 miles in 24 hours. I was absolutely hell-bent on that for it to only be sort of pushed off to the wayside because uh, the heel issues were sort of kicking yeah. in. Uh, but I was getting obsessed about how could I uh, how could I improve my breathing efficiency in order to sort of maintain a seven minute mile pace for a twenty four hours straight to be able to nail one hundred and four. I mean, it's not a small task. No, and I think I, there was a number of factors that I was getting caught up with. Um, you can do a, um, <clears throat> uh opening up my nasal passages so that I'm breathing through my nose better to make my breathing more efficient, all that sort of stuff was just sort of churning through. And I think maybe I lost the enjoyment out of running. And yeah. so I, 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 I sort of pulled out, I, obviously Lee and some, some of you, I think had I pulled it off, maybe even sort of crossed the border and come down to, to support. But yeah. I, I, I'm glad to say I sort of pulled it fairly early because I could have, yeah, I, I just don't think I was prepared enough for it. Um, fast forward to today, and I'm just quite enjoying going out. I, I, if I'm doing a 12 minute pace, mate, I'm great. That's fine. And I, but I know that I've checked my watch, as I'm sure we all do at points when we're running, seeing what the pace is you're maintaining. And it, 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 it's not terribly uncomfortable to maintain a seven minute or an eight minute pace. Yeah. 
I'm perfectly happy with those. So in answer to your question, what, what's next? I don't know. But I, I, I've said to a couple of people who have done these um, backyard ultra things, so the 24, lo- much like Loch Ness. Yeah. They do, because of that freedom to do as many laps as you feel comfortable with, I quite like the... I quite like the freedom in that. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go out. Well, I feel all right. I'm going to go and do a second. Well, I'm yeah. right. going to go and do a third. And I, it just feels a little bit more of an easy point of entry in terms of races. It certainly sounds like it's it's more finding finding your love for running again, mm. and then just seeing what happens and whether whether that's the the world record attempt again, come raising its head, at least you'll be comfortable and you'll have the love for it again without it being like another job or having your life taken over by uh, over analyzing every movement that you make. Yeah. I, it, it's, it, you know, zone two training people talk about. I think the whole point of zone, zone I've thought about this a couple of times recently because my, I've, I've got my heart, like you, Zone two, my heart rate needs to be, I think it's sort of seven, no. It's your maximum heart rate minus your age. And so I think I need to be 140-ish, somewhere around there. And and I, I've, I've taken that, but I think zone two is about not worrying about that sort of thing. Yeah. And you will run at a pace that your body is comfort- comfortable with. And and fund- I, I, I check Strava each time it sort of uploads or Garmin or whichever it is. And it's coming in at about the right sort of heart rate for that sort of stat. It's only because I've elevated because I've seen a section that I quite like, and so yeah, yeah. running downhill. I, I just, I just think running is about just going out there and enjoying, and I, you can get all uh, hippie-ish with it and convening with nature. <laughs> <laughs> just going outside and doing some exercise. That's all that bangs. I, I, my, my job is fundamentally spent with gym people who are trying to find them space yeah and the the long and the short of it is that um people just just go out and do some exercise it's and, free yeah man <laughs> i mean that's maybe, maybe a good place to, to to end it actually ben is is, is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very um like you say it's very hippie-ish in a way but it's not right. it's 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 it is the trend and as the kids are saying go out and touch grass um i don't even know if they're saying that anymore i don't i'm not down with the kids <laughs> if anyone wants to follow you uh or even the 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 barefoot crew what their what are the handles that they can do that with uh, so I am uh, at the barefoot daddy. Um, I, I I flip. And, yeah, I, barefoot daddy is my main account. That's where I spend most of most of my time. Uh, the barefoot crew is uh, the barefoot crew uh, at barefoot crew five k. Um, you can find that that group there. Um, you can find that uh, group. Yeah, you can find those accounts there. So that's my wife. <laughs> it's, it's a good time then you also have just before we finish off you also have a yeah. website with a bit of a blog i don't know if you're updating that uh, much i, I haven't, just now. haven't done it late but it's the uh the beth daddy uh dot com uh, I, there's a link in my um uh, lime tree there's some links in there if people want to follow on strava i it, it, there was a time where there was one that there was a desire to sort of garner a following and see what it would manifest into. Uh, If people want to follow, they can follow. If they've got any questions, I'll answer them. I quite enjoy sort of interacting. We wouldn't be having this conversation had there not be some interaction through Instagram. And uh, I've, I've found it invaluable for making what I expect to be lifelong friends, whether it's running at the core or not. Yeah. Oh, it's been fantastic. I've yeah. I've I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, our time tonight, Ben, and I uh, can only thank you um, so much for coming on and speaking to me. Yeah, absolutely welcome, Stephen. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And to you. So chill, so relaxed, and so very zen. I bloody love Ben. I didn't get as much face-to-face time with him as I might have liked when we did the Loch Ness 24 last year, predominantly because of the weather, but also because he was typically 
out on the course after me, making it pretty much impossible. But the time that I did get, well, it was of course a pleasure. He certainly resonates the vibes that he semi kind of jokingly poked fun at with peace, love and happiness. It's hard to believe that he is also a super heavy metal fan, much like myself in his spare time and when he is smashing out some awesome workouts and mega runs. Check out what Ben and the Barefoot crew have on the go on his and their Instagram pages, if nothing more than to open up your mind a little bit to the different avenues going on out there in the wider running world. Thanks so much for joining me today though. Downloading and streaming the podcast will always be the best ways that you can support the show. If you'd like to show your physical support for the podcast at all, you can purchase a t-shirt from our merchandise partners over at Twisted Running. Pop over to the Twisted Running website or find a link on our website, thepoint99podcast.com. The show is available on all major podcast platforms as well as on our website via the inbuilt player on the episodes page. You can also find us on YouTube, both YouTube podcasts and YouTube itself with some nice little graphics that the system generates for us. Finally, you can follow us on Instagram by searching the point 99 podcast. If you want to get in touch, drop us a DM there on or on my own Instagram, Mr. Underscore Steve underscore runs, or you can do the old fashioned thing and email me at the point 99 podcast at gmail.com. As always, I can't thank you enough for tuning in today, though. I will admit we have some cracking guests coming up in episodes 9 and 10. Admittedly, they are ultra runners, but we won't hold that against them. But until the next episode, until episode 9, I hope you stay safe. Enjoy your runs and you will hear from me soon.